Welcome to Arts at King Street Station. My name is Randy Engstrom. I have the privilege of serving as the director of the Office of Arts and Culture, and it is my great honor to welcome you to this space and to this show. Um, I want to start today by acknowledging that today and every day we are here on Indigenous land. And today we are here on the land of the Coast Salish people. We thank them for their hospitality. We are so grateful to be here. Um, to begin our day, uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome, to welcome all of you. I cannot turn the mic up, but I will do my best. We'll try. Um, I'm going to invite up Ken Workman. He, ooh, careful. Ooh. Bear with us. Ken is Chief Seattle's great, 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 great grandson. He is a leader in our community and one of my favorite people. And he's going to uh, join us now to welcome you to this space. Ken. Thank you, Randy. Hasislav Dmitsi to see ya ya ya. It is good to see you, my friends. Hasislav, um, te hoja um slah. It's good that we're here on a sunny day, and my brain will clear out any second now, and I can speak once again in our own Lashutsi language. By way of formal introduction, ya yustub steeds da hata doabs. I am workman of the Duwamish tribe. And great 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 grandson of Chief Seattle. Adisha Pud. Al Tudi Tuhak De Duabs Dacho Sali. Adisha Adisha Ogwood. That a long time ago, before my grandfather invited a bunch of strangers onto this land. There was a village right here, Zizalalich. And Zizalalich would have started at Yesler Street and then went out on this peninsula where we had long houses, several long houses. And you're standing just about on that spot. So all the land that you see to the west is all from this regrade, from the land, these hills being washed down. So it is my honor, it's my privilege to say to you, as my grandfather said, Bring your canoes ashore. You are welcome here. But then he looked out and he saw more canoes. So he said, So this is a reduplication of this word that means uh, invite. It means welcome. This gui. Seattle is an international city today, and so we recognize that there are many people. And so we, as Duwamish, we say, Gwi Gwi Hid Dak to Siaya, Adi Shio Gura Fata Duwaps, Ate Yaya Lab Duwaps. Welcome, my friends, onto this Pacific land of the ancient Duwamish people. And the Duwamish people have been here for a while. We have stories of when it was cold and then it wasn't. And in all that time, on the hills that you see behind you, on the hills that are to the west, to the south, to the north, the Duwamish people have been living and dying on this land, just like all of us have on our own respective places. And in all that time, the Yayalab, the ones that have passed, they have been going down into the ground. And at this time of year, on this weekend, when these trees come into bloom, all of that stuff that was grandma and grandpa come back out of the ground and they go back up into these trees. So when my grandfather was signing away all of this land, he made this, these comments. He said, you abandon your, uh, your dead and you think they're powerless, but they're not entirely powerless. And he said, the ground is more loving to our feet than it is to yours. And all we have to do here in Seattle is take our shoes off as Duwamish people because our feet then are in direct contact with the ground, which are in direct contact with our ancient ones that are in the ground. And he also said, when the streets are empty and, you, and the lights are off, they will throng with our people. 
because right over here in this little neighborhood, this Pioneer Square in Seattle, it was rebuilt in 1909, and inside of those buildings are massive timbers. So those trees were already three and 400 years old, which means the Duwamish people are in those trees and the buildings in downtown Seattle, which fulfills his prophecy. When the lights are out, the Duwamish will swarm these streets. These words that he said, they're not unique to the Duwamish tribe. They're the same words that people all around the world know, that we're all related, and that we give thanks to the grass, to the berries in the ground, to the oxygen that these trees provide for us. The ancient ones, they live in the trees and they continue to work. And so the dead aren't entirely powerless. They're here. And so it's a, prayer, a privilege, it's an honor for me to stand before you here today on this ancient village site of Zizalalich. Zizalalich. And say, Gwigwi Hidaktis Yaya Adisha Pud. But it's also important that we recognize all the hard work that's going on here. Momentary pause. <laughs> and so we want to recognize many of our friends. <clears throat> so I have friends from Alaska, from Canada, from um, uh, down around Oregon, and they've all taught me how to say thank you in their own words. So for our Tlingit friends, we say Gunal Chish because this is their word for thank you. And so we recognize their good work and we thank them for being here today. 300 miles south of them, you run into the Haida Gwaii. So use Hawa when you speak to them. They will recognize you. 100 miles east of them, you run into the Simpson where they use Deutschkum. A further 300 miles south on Vancouver Island, make sure you say Kleiko when you're talking to the New Chinook. And right up here, the Lummi and the Saanich, they use Heiskasiyam. All of those words we recognize, and we speak these words here in this city named after my grandfather. Our Tulela friends use Teak. The Suquamish, the Duwamish, the Snoqualmie, the Muckleshoot, the Puyallup use Kwi. And so we say, Eskwadidif Chetisiyaya Todagwi Bashid Afate He Kwishug South Seattle. Uh, thanking my friends for their journeys on these packed streets of Seattle. For our friends on the Columbia River, the Chinook, we say hi, Omasi, because this is their word. And for our friends at Standing Rock, who put up such a fight on that pipeline a couple of years ago, we say Pila Maya, because we recognize their good work. Now, these aren't all the tribes that are up and down the coast and around the land. These are just the people that have said, Ken, this is how we say thank you. And so I am thanking you here today in English, in Lashutsi, as Tig, as Kui, as Gunul Chish, as Hawa, as Doichkam, as Hayo Masi, Haiskasiyam, Pila Maya. Thank you for being here today. And let's enjoy this fantastic work provided. Hoy. Thank you so much. Ken Workman, everybody. Uh, it is now my pleasure to welcome the Lummi Blackhawk singers and dancers. Thank you. 
the Lummy Blackhawk singers and dancers. Um, before I have the honor of inviting up our mayor, uh, I have the weirdest segue in the world, which is to say that if you uh, drive a white Toyota, license plate 634ZLE, and it's parked downstairs, it's in a fire lane, and our new neighbors at Amtrak are going to make it go away. So, if that's yours, yeah. Whew. Um, I want to borrow one from uh, my new best friend, Timothy White Eagle. When we were doing a preview of this show earlier this week, he asked everyone if we could take one collective breath in. I think I need that after that performance. So if we could just... Thank you. With that, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that really big ideas can't happen without really strong leadership. Um, and I am genuinely proud to work for the mayor of our city. Please welcome Mayor Jenny Durkin. Good afternoon. There we go, that's right. Good afternoon. Thank you, Randy, for that, but um, I thank you to our friends from the Lummi. That was beautiful. Let's give them another hand. I really want to thank Ken also. I know he welcomed us all before, and I just came from a dedication of affordable housing in the Central District. There's a new affordable housing unit, and it was so inspiring. So many people from the community came back to the community to see that. And we've seen in the history of Seattle that as growth happens, we've seen more community displaced. And when we talk about displacement, it's really important for all of us to remember, when we say we stand on Duwamish lands, that means something. It means that when we came here, non-Indigenous people, that our arrival was automatically a displacement. And the history of the Native American people in America, Washington State, in Seattle, has been one of deep need for resilience, but fortunately, they have the brilliance to be so resilient. And one of the ways that we come together today, that intersectionality of celebrating all that is good, is to come together to celebrate the art. And arts at King Street Station has been so many years in the making. I want to take a moment just to acknowledge all the people here, city staff, community members, and others who have worked so hard to bring this vision to a reality. So I want to give you all a round of applause. It is really exciting to see so many people on this gorgeous day gather to celebrate our native tradition and also celebrate coming together to celebrate the arts. We know that a good and, and wonderful and beautiful city has to be one where people are welcome, where the diversity isn't just a word, but it's a meaning, and it also is the reality in every neighborhood you walk. But that diversity also has to include our artists. They are the ones who are able to capture both our despair and our inspiration, to convey that and that human meaning to us all. And so as we continue to build more affordable housing, which we have to do in Seattle as quickly as we can, we must make sure it's a place where we can also ensure that artists can continue to live and to, to thrive. Our artists really are, if you look at any great city or any great culture through the history of time, there's always art that centers it, that captures the love, the hopes, and the aspirations of the people. So together we're here to praise the first exhibition we're here at Arts at King Street Station, and it is fitting that it is a celebration of our Native American artists, and that the community came together to give them a place and a forum to show their art, their hope, their inspiration, their meaning, and sometimes their despair. It is a year-long process to select this art. I'm gonna get the tour, I haven't seen it yet. I've seen glimpses, and I can't tell you, it is so exciting. So I wanna thank everyone for being here today. As you walk through this, I hope we all leave inspired, 
inspired to reach out our hands to those who have less, to maybe take an extra moment to make this city a better city, and to remember that the things that bring us together, our common humanity is so much stronger than that which separates us. So let us celebrate today, again, to those dancers, to those who spent so much time here. I thank you, and Randy, I'll turn it back over to you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Four years. Can I turn it up? I will do my best. Um, Four years in the making, discussion, feedback, decision-making, construction. I've never been more proud of anything in my entire adult life than I am of this project, of this show, of this space, of this community, and of the work we can do together. There's been lots of questions uh, for the last four years. Why are we doing this? Why is this happening? Um, short version. This used to be owned by the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad Company. Their offices were on the third floor where our offices are now. They left in the 1970s, and for over 30 years, this beautiful space sat vacant. In March of 2008, the city bought this building from the railroad uh, and did a $50 million historic renovation, and it is beautiful if you want to go take a look at the Amtrak lobby. And yet, the second and third floor continue to sit vacant. In 2015, the late Paul Allen brought an inaugural art fair to Seattle, and a local curator named Greg Lundgren had an idea to do a local response to this national and international art fair. That summer, our staff worked with SDOT to procure a one-month lease to do a pop-up show to see what could happen. The result was a show called Out of Sight. Uh, 4,000 people came, to, came through to see it, and we started thinking, what if, what if? this could happen all the time? What if this could be a permanent cultural space? What if this could be a place in the center of the city to lead with our values? And so we spent about a year talking to the community. How could we center underrepresented voices? How could we live into our commitment to racial equity through the arts in a permanently affordable cultural center in the middle of downtown Seattle? And so we did. And we talked to many of you uh, and hundreds of other people and we are so proud to be opening this space with this show, with Yahout. The culmination of a year-long indigenous community-based project. It will be up through August 3rd. This show is incredible, and I can't say enough about the three curators who worked tirelessly to put this together. So much of this is their work. Uh, Tracy Rector, who is Choctaw and Seminole. Give it up for Tracy. Asia Tail, who is Cherokee, Saprit Colon. These three people executed one of the most incredible art exhibitions I've ever seen in my life, and you're all going to get to go see it in about two minutes. Um, but there are some more thank yous, because it really, the lifting the sky theme is, uh, is apropos, because it took hundreds and hundreds of hands to lift this space and this show. I want to thank uh, our construction partners in this. First, we worked with Olson Kundig on a concept for the space. Thank you to them. And Shaq Deslani, oh my god, you guys crushed it. Manifesting this goal of an adapted reuse train station, the old and the new, the modern and the historic, together. I hope you like it. We certainly love it. We envision an open and inviting space where everyone in this city and even everyone visiting this city feels welcome, feels at home. We hope you feel welcome and at home today in the space and every day that we keep this space open. I want to thank Bill Laborde from the Seattle Department of Transportation, the man with the keys. He let us in four years ago and we never left. Thank you, Bill. Um, the person with the, with the least fun job in this whole project, Ryan Kennedy at the Finance and Administrative Services Department, our, con our construction project manager. This was a bear. This project took forever. All kinds of things went wrong. We couldn't have done it without Ryan. She was incredible. Um, I want to thank previous council members Nick Lakata and Tom Rasmussen, who backed this project from the jump and helped us legislate it, and Lisa Herbold, who continues to be our champion, not just for this project, but for the arts in this city. 
Thanks, Lisa. Um, there have been a whole bunch of arts commissioners who are our partners in crime to make this happen. A bunch of them are here today. Most of them are wearing name tags, thanks to the leadership of Priya Frank, our current chair. Um, the Arts Commission are our partners in all of this work. Um, we appreciate you so much, you guys. We couldn't have done this without you. Um, and when I say I am more proud of anything, what I'm really talking about is my staff and the team I get to work with every day. What an exceptional group of people who put everything on the line to get to this place today. And I get to stand up here and talk, but it's all of them that made this happen. In particular, Calandra, Surface, Kelly, Erica, Blake, Ben, Matthew, Otz, Everyone touched it. I think those folks are all living here, or have been for the last three weeks. So, also don't tell SDCI. I'm not legal for presidential. Um, I am grateful, I am honored, I am humbled. Let's cut a ribbon and go see this new cultural space. Welcome to Arts of King Street Station, thank you.